What's going on guys? I am Simple Simon and it is time for another figure unboxing. If you guys are new to the channel, just to fill you in, I've always collected figurines, uh, but I've always been an inbox collector. And as of recently, I've decided to start unboxing them and I'm having the time of my life. Today, I'll be unboxing for the first time uh, a figure from the McFarlane toy range. I own quite a few DC characters from uh, McFarlane, but again, I've always kept them in the box. But I recently picked up this bad boy, which is the Michael Keaton Batman from the new Flash movie. Let's get nuts. Uh, it is a really, really cool looking figure. It's not my first Batman. I believe I also have the um, Batman from Death Metal. This figure looks so good. I recently watched uh, an unboxing of it on another channel. Uh, I can't remember the name, but I'm going to plug them up here because I'm really getting into toy channels uh, and especially smaller toy channels. But I just fell in love with this figure. It looks so damn good. So today, this is what we'll be unboxing. Let's do this. Just before we begin, uh, if you guys want to show some support for the channel, just make sure you give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment and all that good stuff. And if you are a figurine toy guy who maybe creates content as well, uh, let me know. Hit me up in the comments because uh, I'd love to check out your stuff too. Uh, like I said, I'm really getting into this uh, figurine unboxing stuff. So this is the figure. We'll quickly look at the outside packaging before we start it off. Pretty uh, generic McFarlane box there. And there's some nice art on the back there. I've always thought that these sort of presented well in the box. And the one thing I noticed as well with McFarlane figures is they've got that card in the back. Now, I believe it's sealed to the card, which kind of sucks. So you kind of got to cut it open. It's, there's no way of really getting around that and making the um, box really mint if you don't want to take that card out. But uh, I know we'll see how we go. We'll bust this open and have a look. Anyone who collects McFarlane figures and unboxes them, let me know what you guys do with the boxes. Cause you know, I do like to keep the boxes and the cards since I've been doing this, but I don't know, I don't know if it's worth it sometimes. <laughs> so uh, let me know in the comments. All right, so pretty good looking figure there. There we go. So this is what I meant about the McFarlane's. I've never actually seen this because I've never opened one up. You've got the DC figure stand there and you've got the card, but I really don't like how these are sealed to the uh, to the back card here. So the only way to really get that out, I guess you can kind of cut around it maybe and slide it out, but really they're designed to just be peeled off. Um, I might do that a little bit later. Accessories with this, you've got the grappling hook gun, uh, batarang, are they silver? Are they supposed to be silver? I could have sworn they were black, but okay. And a pair of extra hands in punching mode there. Already, I just got one thing to say. This is really tight to the figure, so I might actually use some scissors just because I don't really want to, I don't really want to um, hurt the figure in. All right, so getting him out of the box, I must say for my first experience unboxing a McFarlane figure, that was not fun. They really have a good uh, lock on him in there, but anyway. Here is the figurine, bit of a color on his um, boots there. As you can see, I'm colorblind, so I can't tell what that color is, but I mean, I don't know if it's meant to be like a mud sort of effect there or what. It's got some dirty boots. Yeah, look, the paint job's okay. It just looks very plastic. Like, I guess, I don't even think this is painted. I guess it's just, just black plastic. Uh, it does look like that. So, I mean, maybe, um, I mean, maybe you could maybe customize this with some paint of your own to make it look better. Uh, in fact, uh, I have a friend I know called Jin. He customizes figures. Uh, he shops at Big City Comics where I shop, uh, and I've actually already spoken to him. I want him to color the uh, utility belt to the gold, yellow, whatever it is in the original movie. Uh, I believe in the Flash movie, it is black. So that's why they've done it black, uh, but I want it to look like the uh, 89 old school one. The funny thing is the day after I purchased this, I saw that they actually released the proper Batman 89 with the gold belt, but he comes in a two pack with the suit. Uh, sorry, with the Batmobile. I'd love to have that Batmobile from McFarlane, but uh, it is just too big. I don't really have any place to uh, put it, but let's check out the articulation. So fit his head doesn't really move a lot. Left and right isn't too bad. So not very movie accurate, because as you guys know, in the movie, he kind of turns 
like this rather than turning his head left and right. Um, we'll look at his arm. Ooh, look at that. What are they called? Butterfly joints. That's right. <laughs> um, so you got butterfly joints there. Oh, that's the first. All right, so that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Now, I don't even know if I've put it back on. His arms don't really move up. Um, he's got these kind of shoulder pads here, which kind of stop it from moving up. I don't even know if I've applied that butterfly joint properly. Oh, mate, I love saying that word, don't I? But uh, I don't know if I like them anymore after that experience. Anyway, so his arms really don't move up much. Uh, up and down like that is fine, just not outwards. Uh, he's got some bicep rotation there, uh, elbow bends, which is good. Uh, and his wrist swivels around as well. His left arm's the same, only goes so high before his arm dislocates and pops out of his socket. Everything's the same on the left, I believe, here. All right, his ab crunch. Oh, ab crunch is pretty weak too. Articulation's kind of average on this so far. Uh, he goes back a little bit more, but his ab, oh, uh, it's a little bit. So that's that. Rotates like that. I'm shocked how, how easily that arm popped out just then. I'm still in shock. The legs, about that high, about that far back. So articulation so far is not fantastic on this. Outwards, well, he gets to about there before it feels like his leg's gonna pop off. Knee joints there. His foot has a lot of rotation on it. That's pretty cool. Uh, up and down. Oh, that's impossible angles there. And he's got some... Uh, a foot hinge, sorry, toes there. Um, so yeah, that's the articulation. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not super impressed with that articulation, especially that arm is pretty weak. Yeah, we'll see what happens when I try to pose him for some images later. The cape, uh, this is the first figure I've seen. Well, not that I've seen, but the first time I've had a uh, fabric cape, which is kind of cool. I must say, I mean, I guess it's cooler because it's a little bit more realistic with the way it flows. When they've got the hard plastic capes, I think that looks aesthetically better, uh, but this I think is a little bit more realistic because obviously the plastic ones that are molded, uh, they just kind of stay in the one position. All right, so now we'll do some size comparisons and comparing to some other figures. That is him standing next to my Marvel Legends Spider-Gwen from across the Spider-Verse, um, towering over Gwen there. Then you got the much taller figure from across the Spider-Verse, which is Spider-Punk. Batman still towering over the tall, lanky Spider-Punk there. And then we'll throw in some Star Wars Black Series. Here's my Ned B figurine. Um, still taller than the droid there. Uh, the next one is going to be the ultimate face-off here. There is Batman next to my, one of my newest pickups, which is my Thanos from SH Figure Arts. Um, man, Batman, look, I mean, he looks pretty good next to Thanos. I mean, there they are just going head to head and a face off there. Batman's pretty tall, that's impressive. Um, I'll get the measuring tape and actually see how tall he actually is. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, he's pretty impressive. He's just under eight inches. I remember Thanos was about eight inches. Uh, Batman standing, I mean, from the top of his ears, just under eight inches there. Pretty impressive. So before I give you my uh, honest opinion, uh, let's take some photos with this guy. now that I've had a chance to play with it a little bit, as far as the articulation goes, it's probably the worst articulation out of all the figures that I've done so far since I've been doing these fig figure unboxings, which is not a lot. I've done what, maybe 
four or five. It is my first McFarlane, so I would like to know if you guys collect a lot of McFarlane and you play with these a bit more. Is it just the Batman that's like this, or is all McFarlane toys struggle a little bit with the articulation? I believe it's just the way he's designed. Obviously, he's got the cowl. He's got his shoulder pads, which really limit him from moving his arms any further up. It was very embarrassing when I ripped his arm off before. One thing I did notice about the paint job, which I don't like, I don't like the way they've painted his eyes. He's not really looking forward on. He's kind of looking slightly off to the distance, which I don't really like. I mean, it kind of works for certain poses and things like that. Uh, I just kind of wish he was just looking straight forward. Again, the paint job, look, it just looks like it was black plastic. It doesn't look like this actually has a paint job. So I'd be interested to see, maybe when I give this to uh, Jin to customize the belt, maybe I'll ask his thoughts on what he thinks that he could do with this. So uh, stay tuned for a future video when I maybe get um, someone to customize this for me. The main reason I bought this figure was because I thought it looked great and it, re it really does. It's a really great looking figure. I wish the art articulation was a little bit better, but uh, I can't really complain. Uh, I apologize that my photos and things, my poses aren't very good because I'm still getting used to these. It was very hard to stand this upright. Um, I'm still kind of uh, learning and getting better at actually trying to pose them. I'm very basic right now. I'm amazed with all the channels that I watch and the type of poses they can put their figures in. I uh, hope I can have the patience to get to that level one day. But look, I really wanted to have a good looking Batman figure in the range. I mean, I do have that death metal one, I guess. I always forget that I bought that. But look, I'm really glad I bought this. Um, but that's the end of the video. Uh, again, if you guys know a bit more about McFarlane toys, let me know where do they rank amongst all the different toy brands, Marvel Legends, SH Figure Arts, Mafex, all those brands. Uh, let me know where they rank. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll get a chance to uh, get a few more McFarlane figures in the collection and do some more unboxings in the future. But that's it for this one. If you guys are still watching, I appreciate you. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up on the way out. And until next time, I'm Simple Simon. Tell your friends that I'm Batman.